Hi, I'm Jason, and I uh, study Applied Mathematics and Statistics at RMIT in Melbourne. Um, so these are six things I wish I'd known before I started studying maths. This year I'll graduate with a, a distinction average, so I think I've done well. Um, if, you, if you're thinking about studying maths, go and do it. It's just great, and it's hard to explain why that is to someone who hasn't already studied some maths. But the more you learn, the more amazing it gets. So go and study maths. Um, so here are six things. One, maths is not a spectator sport. And this is especially true with pure maths units. And when, when you're doing calculus one and calculus two, uh, you know, you can get by by just watching what the teacher does on the blackboard. But when you get to, um, you know, like topology, and real analysis and abstract algebra, probably in your third year, um, if you don't practice the work and do the proofs yourself, you're going to get into an exam or into an assessment and you're going to find that you can't, you can't do it unless you're, a, unless you're a genius. You know, if you're a genius, maybe you can watch what someone else does and understand it. That's good for you. Personally, I'm not a genius, so I had to practice a lot. And I had to struggle. So on the concept of struggling, a certain amount of struggle is good. But my second point is, if you sincerely try and do a proof, but you can't do it, don't sit there feeling stupid, right? What you, what you instead need to do is go and look up an answer on the internet. There are proofs on YouTube, there are textbooks, um, there are other places where you can find proofs. What you can do is look at those proofs, study them, understand them, and then when you've fully digested that proof, set that aside and treat it as a heuristic. And now you've got something to aim for. So, so now you can go and do the proof yourself without looking at what you've read. And you're still learning that way. It's not as good as doing the proof yourself, but you know, looking at someone else's proof and then re-implementing it is a lot better than not doing the content at all. And it's a lot, lot better than sitting there feeling stupid and having a bad time. I, re I think that's one of the reasons people hate maths is because there was a time in school when they tried to do a maths problem and they couldn't do it and then they felt stupid. And that's a bad experience. So don't do that to yourself. Um, number three is on the concept of feeling stupid. My third point is if you're, if you're sitting there wondering, are you smart enough to do a maths degree, then you're wasting your time because the answer is you are, um, you are smart enough. And what you have to do if you're going to succeed is put your head down and do the work. Um, it's, it's this weird article of faith um, that, that if you just do the work, then you will learn what you need to learn and then you'll be able to succeed. But for some reason, um, you, you just need to trick yourself into believing this, that if you put your head down and do the work, then you'll succeed and then you succeed. So it's a, it's a funny thing. Um, number four is study groups are valuable. So... If you can find someone who cares about learning maths as much as you, then what you can do is you can meet once a week and just, if there's two of you or three of you or something, take it in turns to explain things to each other. So what's gonna happen is um, either you understand the content and you explain it to someone else, or if you don't understand the content, then someone else will explain it to you and then finally you understand it. But the real, the real benefit is having, having the opportunity to explain it to someone else. And if you have a look at your lecturers, right, in first year calculus and linear algebra, they know the content back to front, but they were once in your position. The, the reason they know it back to front is because they've spent, it, they've spent years explaining it to people. And that's, that's what happens when you explain things to people. It's, it's like a supercharged version of learning. So as undergraduates, we can take advantage of that too. We can, um, 
We can look at the assessments with other people. We can revise the lecture notes with other people and do it together. Maths doesn't have to be something you struggle with by yourself. Um, okay, number five is scheduling tasks for different days. So I used to try and do everything for a unit on a particular day, like I'd do all of calculus one on a Monday and then all of <coughs> probability on a Tuesday or something like that. And that made sense at the time. In my third year, only this year, did one of my lecturers point out to me that it was inefficient because it doesn't take advantage of the way the human brain works. The human brain works and benefits from being able to uh, sleep on things. So, so what that means is if you split work up over different days, your brain gets time to digest things while you're asleep and it's making all the connections. So how you implement this is maybe read the notes for the lecture the day before the lecture and then you, you might understand nothing at all. But then the next day you do the lecture, you understand a bit more. And then the next day after you've slept on it, come back and read the notes and take notes if you want. And then you've had several days to sleep on it. Now, there's a caveat though, and that is, it's kind of like what Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. You know, so when you study maths, um, getting punched in the face is a bit like, um, well, it's a bit like getting stuck with a hard problem and then falling behind and then all of your best plans are just not going to work anymore. But my point is, if you've got the time and if you're not struggling, you're better off splitting things over different days. Um, number six and final point is writing things by hand seems to really help. Or in my case, I use a stylus and a tablet. Now, um, I, I for year I for more than a year tried to take all my notes with latex. And I thought I was really smart because I had this really nice notation. Um, I go back now and read those notes. They're really nice notes, but I don't seem to have retained very much from some of those units, which is a disaster. Um, I seem to really retain what I learned by writing things down. There's, there's just some magic that happens when you use a pen and paper. But you're, in my opinion, you're better off using a stylus and a tablet so then you've got online notes. You can put them on GitHub or somewhere, um, and that's beneficial. So there you go, six things I wish I'd known before I started studying maths. And if you are thinking about it, um, it's a very rewarding experience. I hope you have a go. All right, thanks.